Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics. And in this video, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about a tool that I use just for fun. It's not the most accurate thing in the world, but it's close enough, um, definitely close enough for trying to figure out what uh, basically it would take. So it's this product, uh, this tool I should say, that's on a website, uh, it says it's B-A-U-D-L-I-N-E, bodline.com slash Eric slash base slash xmac xer.html or the piston excursion calculator. So if you just type in that bod line piston excursion calculator, you should find the tool. And what this does is it allow that you can choose what to solve for, but you, you basically can say, okay, how much X max, how much excursion one way do I need to be able to produce a certain SPL without any room gain um, at one meter. And so I have a single 12 inch driver, for instance, is what I put into it. And I want to know how I can achieve 115 decibels at one meter at 30 hertz. So how much excursion do I need from that single 12? Well, 47.9 millimeters. So that's impossible. There are no drivers that I'm aware of that have 47.9 millimeters of one-way excursion. So a single 12-inch driver isn't going to do that. We can't get there from here, as they say. Well, what can it, what would be a reasonable limit? Well, if we reduce the SPL to 110, it reduces that down to 26.9, around 27 millimeters of excursion, and that actually falls within the realm of possibility. This would still be a very high XMAX driver, but they exist. Um, of course, this isn't accounting for power, and the amount of power it takes to do that might be quite significant, but that's not the point. So I had done these other videos on infrasonics. I think, you know, it doesn't even have to be worrying about infrasonics. You can just be thinking about, like, in general, what do I need to achieve that SPL? So what if I wanna know what it takes to do 110 dBs at 20 Hertz? Well, with that single 12 inch driver, we're now at 60 millimeters of X max. What if I went with two 12s? Well, now we're at 30 millimeters of X max, and that's now a reasonable amount, because we doubled the displacement, so that makes sense that we would half the X max. I shouldn't say that. We didn't double the displacement, we doubled the surface area, <laughs> and that allows us to get the same displacement with half the X max, okay. So two 12s would do that. Now keep in mind, that's assuming two co-located 12s. If you do a 12 in one corner and a 12 in another quarter, that is gonna be uh, what we call random phase coupling. However, in normal small rooms, 20 hertz is such a large bandwidth, that this is not a major concern. Uh, we actually do get in phase coupling for the most part at 20 hertz. And so probably this is pretty correct. And two 12s happens to be the same displacement as a single 18, so that makes sense. But what if we want to do stuff below 20? Well, if we go to 15 hertz, now we need 54 millimeters of excursion. That's probably not the most reasonable. And so we would need to go to four 12 inch drivers, which is roughly equal to um, uh, two, two 18s. And that's 110 dB. If you want to be louder than that, I mean, actually to, to make it even stand a chance of being audible, we probably need to be at 120. That's 85 millimeters of excursion. Can't get there from here. What are we gonna do? Well, we could go to eight drivers, but actually that's still 42 millimeters of excursion. We could go to 16 of those 12 drivers. And that brings us down to 21. I mean, you know, you could say something more reasonable. Okay, 12, 12 inch drivers gets us down to 28 millimeters of excursion. So that certainly could be reasonable. It's an awful lot of 12 inch drivers. And so you can say to yourself, well, why don't I just go to an 18? And we can go down to six 18s would give us 120 dB at 15 Hertz. So you can see why you would want to do that. Um, so now let's talk about those crazy subs from Escendo because they're pretty cool. And, um, but there, I mentioned before on the video, when you get to a certain uh, like output level that you're trying to achieve. So we're going to go with this 120 dB, we'll stick with that. And we'll stick with the 15 Hertz for now. And you're trying to, to do that. You get to a point where like, it just becomes a bit unrealistic to be able to fit enough of these subwoofers, like these 18s. And so you say, well, why don't we just go bigger? And keeping them close together still has some benefits, even though you should get in-phase coupling. Um, you may not exactly get in-phase coupling at such low frequencies. So, um, you know, can you stack six 18s in a corner? Probably not. So if we go and we change this from an 18 to, I'm gonna go a 24. 
We can do 324s to equal the same thing that those 618s did, but that's still a lot. I mean, is there, you know, what's the next step to get this down? How do we get to one driver and still have a reasonable X max requirement? Well, if we go to 32, we're still at 47 millimeters if we're trying to do 48 millimeters, really, if we're trying to do that with a single driver. So if we go to 50, now we're down to 19 millimeters. So a 50 inch driver, which is used to be their largest, now it's their second largest subwoofer, can produce 120 dBs based purely on excursion at 15 hertz at one meter. Now in a room, you're gonna see some losses and you're gonna see some room gain. And the room gain is very, very dependent on the size of the room and how sealed it is. Um, so in practice, you probably would get a bit more output from that, all those other drivers we mentioned than what we were seeing here. But you're also sitting farther away, you're not a meter away and you, you know, sound does reduce with distance. So anyway, looking at what it can do, I mean, if we follow, I'll just, I'll just use this as an example here. Using typical room gain numbers, but we, these are meant to be broadband, so it's probably not accurate at very low frequencies. A large room where you would have like a 17 to 20 foot listening distance. So this would be a room that's over, let's say 4,500 cubic feet. We typically would subtract somewhere between 12 and 13 decibels from what it can do at one meter in order to figure out what the SPL would be in room with room gain, but at the, that farther listening distance. And so what we would achieve in such a scenario would actually suggest that we're well below the 120 decibels. But like I said, I'm, I'm not really sure that that's right in a small room because there's so many reflections around the room at low frequencies that are essentially separate from room gain and bringing up the low frequency sound. And so I suspect that we don't want to use that kind of a calculation. I'd be curious to test this sometime actually. It probably wouldn't be that hard to do. Um, but in any way, this is, I'm like way off topic now. <laughs> the point was trying to figure out just like how much subwoofer you need to get from here to there. I think I hear people often get very scared of big subwoofer drivers, like 18s even, even 15s. And they prefer to see like a bunch of eights or a bunch of tens or a bunch of 12s because it's tighter and better. The problem is when we're in those frequencies below hundred Hertz, you need a good amount of excursion to get a lot of output. Now, obviously at like 80 or 100 Hertz, you don't need that much excursion and it's not a big deal. But when you get down to like 50 Hertz, 40 Hertz, 30 Hertz, 20 Hertz, et cetera, that excursion starts to get, up, the requirement to get that SPL starts to go up so much that it really becomes problematic if you're trying to do that with a bunch of small drivers. You're just better off doing that with bigger drivers. Um, so anyway, Go play with the tool, it's fun, and you can figure out and you can dream and figure out what you need to do. They do give you some warnings, so don't go crazy. If you try to come up with something where you're trying to figure out like how do you achieve 200, which by the way is not possible, but 200 decibels um, from a driver that's a quarter mile long or something, it's gonna give you nonsense. But you know, within reason, um, there are available to DIYers anyway, drivers available from one inch on up to 32 inches. And then you do get companies like Escendo that makes custom drivers for themselves and they have them all the way up to 80 inches now. And so at least you can play with it just to see what it does. Um, for the driver diam diameter, by the way, with this, do make sure that you put in the actual diameter number of, of it and not what you think it is based on like the reduced driver side, you know, like a 12 inch driver isn't really 12 inches in diameter. That's a measurement that's out to the middle of the surround um, or sometimes out a little bit farther than that, depending on the driver. This already accounts for that. So don't try to mess with it and like reduce it down. Just put whatever it is you're using. If you're trying to look at a 12 inch versus a 15 inch versus an 18 inch, just put that in. Put in um, the frequency you're trying to reproduce, the SPL you want to get to, the number of the drivers you have and have at it. It's fun. Uh, so please subscribe, I get more content coming, and appreciate you all watching.